Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. For this video, we're gonna talk about the company code, name, or address changes in SAP. So I will discuss an overview on this, the impacts of the changes. I will share with you a personal checklist that I use, and I will share some testing information or documentation guides. So just a little background on this one. I believe I've done this type of change I think about 12 times throughout my career, which is why I ended up creating my own personal checklist. And I will share this with you guys. I did try to Google this a couple of years back and I found minimal information on this. So I decided to create a blog post on this one. I will use it as the main visual aid for this tutorial. So. I will link the post down below. You can always refer to it for guidance. Okay, so how to change company code or address name changes in SAP. This type of change is challenging and I believe that it's not something that you should take for granted. It's not a simple change or it's not a straightforward change. This usually happens when a certain business is acquired or if certain legal decisions arise that require a change in company name. For example, there is a company that is acquired by another one or they decide to change their name for legal purposes. It's also possible that, okay, maybe the head office or one company decides to move their company from a certain metropolitan to another city if that makes any sense so it's a change in address a lot of different scenarios may arise that may require the change in these company code information so usually in cases like these an existing company code may already be active and the currently utilized one just pretty much prompts a change in the company name or address instead of creating a new one. Just so we're organized in the video, I will tell you how we're going to go about this tutorial. So number one, we're going to talk about the impact. Next, we're going to talk about the importance of obtaining a clear user or key stakeholder confirmation. We're going to talk about the actual changes in the company code name or address. I will share the checklist with you guys and we will talk about the testing and documentation info. Lastly, there is a summary towards the end. First, we're going to talk about the impact and it's not a simple change from company A to company B or company A to company B, C, D incorporated, something like that. As early as now, you need to be able to understand the impacts of executing this change and so it is best practice to make sure that you review the company code settings and the different areas it hits. These are just some examples. So we have here SAP and if we change the company code name or address in SAP, it's possible that we need to consider the customized or non-standard SAP functionalities. So if we make a change in a certain T code and it is somehow used or there are other conditions being mentioned in a custom function module or program then we need to be able to change it there as well next we have a third party software consideration so if sap is sending let's say the company code address or name to a third party software and the third party software does not recognize this or is not handled to accommodate this change in a smooth manner, then we need to take a look into that. If your focus is on SAP itself, then that means that somebody else in the third party will need to do the checking there. Next, we have form output. So this is really important. For example, if you have invoices that are being generated in SAP or some bank statements, anything like that, we need to make sure that all of these form outputs are reflected with the updated company code name and address. For cross-functional over here, it just means that, let's say, sales may be impacted, HR may be impacted, or other logistics, something like that. 
Then lastly, we have legal disclaimers. So for example, if we have some sort of pop-up that notifies the user allowing them to submit some information electronically and we have the company name stated there or the address, then it is also required that you know we update the information there as well. So these are just some of the impacts. So these are just examples of the impacts. Technically, this is going to be a project, maybe, depending on the size. But most definitely, in summary, you want to make sure that all the instances of the company code name or address will be updated accordingly to the right one. This is to avoid confusion. Again, if we provide, for example, customer invoices with the wrong company name or address and we gave an announcement to the media, for example, that, okay, effective April 1, our company name will be company ABC. And so we want to maintain that sense of professionalism and uh, in terms of providing accurate data or documents, we want to keep that in mind. After the impact, we're going to talk about the importance of obtaining a clear user or key stakeholder confirmation. So you really need to ensure that the changes are well documented and you have the clear confirmation from the stakeholders. I suggest that you do not proceed with the changes without a clear confirmation because it can bite you in the end. Who knows? We are putting emphasis on the word clear because a company code name is not a simple change again. And as stated earlier, this type of change impacts several transactions in the business. So one example that I included here is if this type of change goes live or goes to production, there are and there are inconsistencies with any of the forms or the company code names, you might end up with serious business concerns. Okay, now we're going to go to the company code name or address checklist. So this is an image. You can always go to this blog post to double check on the, the checklist. This is my personal guide. So I added a couple of dots here on the last row where I say insert other checks including custom or non-standard SAP functionalities. So in summary, we talked about the internal trading partners maintenance, the company code name and address, the typical T code OX02, the customer master data if applicable, vendor master data, some address maintenance, lockbox maintenance if that is applicable to your SAP system, some other plant. So for example, the company code is linked to a certain plant and the plant has the same address stated that you might want to clarify if that needs to be changed. We have other stuff here such as the payment program configuration, such as the forms, the DME tree, DME engine, checking on the actual configuration, so on and so forth. So the T codes are here summarized and I have a table version over here so you can always check on that. Again, this is just my personal checklist and this is not applicable to all SAP systems. So for example, if I move to another company and they have other configurations in hand and other custom features, then that means I will add onto the list. But more often than not, it's best to check the system thoroughly to make sure that nothing is missed out. Now for the testing and documentation reminders. Again, we now know the impacts of this type of change, so it is clearly important to thoroughly perform testing. And so there are some key points to consider. First, we need to make sure that we do an end-to-end -end testing of business transactions. You can do this. This is crucial. We need to make sure that the whole process, we're not seeing the decommissioned company code name or address in SAP. It's a key element to ensure that you have covered all areas. Ideally, the, the key business users or, or owners should be able to test on these as well. Uh, it's understood that they may be able to perform really thorough testings on this because they should know the actual transactions by heart. 
on an IT perspective, it is always good to test the before and after changes. So in the case that there are some inconsistencies, you have something to refer to before the changes. It's also good practice to you know, pinpoint certain changes or comparisons or even unwanted changes during the testing. Next, we want to, again, put emphasis and importance on the form outputs and transactions involving external use. External use meaning we send out the generated data from SAP to an external party or an external company. So we want to be able to highlight and take extra importance on these test scenarios to avoid potential confusion, errors, urgent concerns, so on and so forth upon the go live. So again, at the end of the day, we need to maintain a level of accuracy when providing the documents to our customers or any third parties. Next, we want to make sure that we have a proper and clear documentation, especially on enhancements. This is where documentation comes in handy and it might really sound cliche, but it is always best practice to create a clear and properly updated document with screenshots and emphasis on the custom features, the integrations, enhancements, or even non-standard SAP functionalities. So in the case that, let's say, in the future, the company code or address, the company code name or address changes again, we have a fixed documentation, which will, of course, save a lot of time. And of course, it's useful for entities or companies that change management frequently or experience frequent merger or acquisition events. Next, we're going to take a look into integration testing and, and its importance. So integration testing is still involved if the data is being sent to and from SAP. If that scenario exists in your enterprise architecture or the overall architecture of the IT system, then we need to double check that the company name or address is part of this data transfer or flow. So again, it would be best to double check on these existing integrations. At this point, cooperation and coordination between the concerned teams will be necessary. So you might be dealing with a lot of third parties or point of contact, so on and so forth to do the testing. We have the summary over here. So we have the impact of changing company code, name or address in SAP, the form outputs, Take note of the customizations, non-standard functionalities. It's a cross-functional change. Take note of the legal disclaimers, if any. Take note of the third-party software, especially in terms of integration and others. Next, make sure to obtain clear user or key stakeholder confirmation. And we have the change company code name or address in SAP checklist. It's over here, the T-codes. Then for the testing and documentation reminders, make sure to do the end-to-end -end testing of business transactions. So if you're doing order to cash, procure to pay, or other processes, please make sure to do it end-to-end -to, -end to make sure that we don't miss out anything. Again, put emphasis in the importance of form outputs and external use for the transactions. Again, put emphasis in and importance on the form outputs and transactions involving external use. Make sure to have proper and clear documentation to save time in the long run. And of course, please take into consideration integration testing. I hope this helps. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.